Good morning, church. Good morning to those worshiping on Zoom. And a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to those who will be watching on YouTube later. Our announcements for the week. Tuesday, April 16th, is the next Bible study session on the book of Revelation. It will begin at 7 p.m. The study will be done via Zoom, and the, the Zoom link is in the Emanuel United News of the Week, or it will be sent out to you. Meetings. Summerfest Barbecue Team meets Wednesday, April 17th, 7 to 9 in the Fireside Room. Join the Emmanuel Walkers every Wednesday at 10 a.m. and walk the church. Walk as many or as few laps as you like. Emmanuel United Church Soup Lunch after worship service on Sunday, April 14th. Donations welcome. And our Emmanuel Moments deadline for announcements, etc., for the next publication is April 21st. The next edition includes May through August. Anyone celebrating a birthday or anniversary this week? Not a soul? Well, happy birthday to anybody out there in Zoom land or on YouTube who is celebrating. We will now have our lighting up the Christ candle. Every day, the light of Christ shines to guide us to the truth, to new life, and to peace. May this light represent the light of Christ that we need in our lives and in our church. Thank you, Barry. Our call to worship this morning. It is responsive, so please say loud. People of God, rejoice in God's presence as we praise and pray, God is with us. People of God, rejoice in this faith community. Rejoice in our Christian faith as we support each other, as we reach out a helping hand, God is with us. Let us pray. O oh God, as we approach you today, as we worship together in your presence, Calm our fears, bring us healing, give us strength and peace. To you, we bring our joys and silent fears. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. Oh, sorry. And our litany for this morning. The Son of God came to bring healing and wholeness to the world, yet he was broken, crucified, his life was ended. We see his suffering on the cross for us. We see his boundless love. He brings us healing and forgiveness. As you appeared to the disciples after the resurrection, come to us. O oh Lord, come to us. Bring us your healing and your peace. Amen. We'll now sing hymn, Voices United, 412. This is the day.
our scripture readings for today. First one is from Acts 4, verses 32 to 35. Now, the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions. But everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands and houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Our second reading is Psalm 133, a song of ascents. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountain of Zion. For there, the Lord obtained his, ordained his blessing, life forevermore. And our third reading is from John 20, verses 19 to 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails on his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. We'll now do him versus united 509 i the lord of sky of sea and sky
and good morning to all of you. And now let us pray together. Loving God, today we again offer to you our prayers of thanks and our prayers of need. As we look around, we can see our many blessings. Caring friends, springtime with its rebirth, a time of renewal and hope, which we have longed for and need. Let us now, as people of God, join together in our prayers of thanksgiving and of hope and of need. We give you thanks, O Lord. We also pray for forgiveness, understanding, and strength. Show us a role here and throughout our community and the world. For we are the caretakers of the earth and all who live here. We are God's workers, his hands and his voice here and throughout the world. Today, our thoughts and prayers are with those who are suffering hardship and disasters. Floods, droughts bringing famine, storms, winds, and earthquakes. May we support and provide for them. Our prayers are also for the people in the Middle East, in Gaza, Palestine, and Israel. Hatred and war have brought suffering, starvation, and death to despairing peoples. We pray, O oh Lord, that you may bring reconciliation and lasting peace. As the war continues in Ukraine, we continue to pray for peace and justice. We pray now for our Emmanuel family, for whom we give thanks. We pray for our minister, Reverend Tessica. May he be healed and renewed. We give you thanks for his love and service. We pray for those who grieve, for those who have health problems, for those who are alone, and those who feel surrounded by sadness. May God's love and strength be with them. I offer my prayers for each of us. May God always be with us and bless us. And I was going to ask for requests for prayers from the congregation. And first, I would like to say that we have lost Norma Johnson and our prayers are with her and with her family and all who loved her. Are there any other requests? Okay, so for Helen Pryor and Michelle Hogman, two who served with us and blessed us with their service. May the Lord give them healing, but he also, may he also give them strength and comfort. Any others? Okay, now in silent prayer, let us offer our personal concerns and thanks. As you have always done and have promised always to do, may you continue to love us, lead us, and forgive us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. No. Okay.
Now we will sing hymn, Voices United, 560. O Master, let me walk with thee. Offering. for those in need here and throughout the world. Amen. To uh, play a song for us.
Um, I would like to thank all of you for this opportunity to talk to you here and share my thoughts and my concerns and my dreams as I go through life's journey, my faith journey. So may the Lord guide my thoughts. May he make my words a blessing and may he give you understanding. Okay. I'll take a deep breath and okay. How did I find the title for this sermon? Or rather, how did this title find me? Okay, long before I knew that I would even be giving a sermon and this sermon. Okay, the word begins with F. What was my inspiration? Why this title? Years ago, I was a teacher, a Latin teacher. I had always enjoyed studying Latin. I know, I'm unusual. And I wanted to share my knowledge and enthusiasm with my students. So when we were translating from Latin, I would often give hints or provide meanings if the student had forgotten. One day when a student had forgotten what the word kibbem meant, I opened my mouth and out came the words, it begins with an F and it has four letters. <laughs> Wherever their eyes or minds had been, they were now on me, the five foot tall gray haired lady. By the way, the mystery word means food. I continued teaching and providing more hints and I began to realize how many words begin with F and how many F words reflect our Christian faith. And also, and so my theme for today, the topic which found me long before I knew that I would be presenting this sermon. How many words beginning with F are part of our life and faith? Faith. You may be asked, what is your faith? Are you Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, non-believer, for example? There are many choices. We would probably answer Christian, but faith is more than a word, a doctrine, special teachings and events. Faith is the bond between each of us and our Lord, his life, his teachings, his promises, his love each day. He is God's promise of forgiveness and eternal life to mankind, a gift for us to accept or to reject. Sometimes we may feel strong and sure in our faith. Sometimes we are unsure, sometimes also, we doubt. Are we worthy or will we be rejected by God? How often did Jesus' disciples, the chosen 12 who traveled with him, ate with him, listened to and spoke with him, did they fail to understand? But the Lord did not turn them away as unworthy. Even his beloved Peter denied him before the crucifixion. The Lord forgave him. Thomas, the doubting disciple, could not believe that Jesus had actually risen from the dead and been seen, alive by the other disciples, not until Jesus himself appeared to him and he could see and touch Jesus' wounds. May we also doubt, may we also question. Paul, the fervent apostle, was not excluded from God's work because he had been a fervent persecutor of Christians. Instead, Paul became a fervent believer and disciple. His journeys were far reaching. But am I worthy? Are you worthy? How often can I doubt or wander? Jesus set no limit. 
God does not reject us for our doubts and mistakes. Our doubts, our weaknesses, our mistakes do not mean that we are no longer welcome in our faith. The Lord accepts us with our strengths and our weaknesses. Which brings me to the next word, fear. Fear for ourselves, fear for those whom we love, fear for mankind, fear for the world, fear for the future, fear. What a powerful word. What a powerful immobilizer. It can immobilize us, make us unable to think, to move, to react. We are frozen. Fear, what a powerful mobilizer, motivator. It can motivate us to think, to act, to feel intensely, to be and to do more than we could imagine. As I look at the world around me, I can see and feel fear. Fear for what I love, the world and all who share it. There's fear of disasters, wars, hatred, and evil. There is fear for our faith, fear for this earth and all who live here. O oh Lord, do not abandon us. May we with your love turn our fears to strengths. We, we defend and preserve this earth and all who live here. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Couldn't resist. What if the Lord stands at the door, at my door or your door and knocks? Do I answer? Do you answer? The Lord does not give up. He is persistent. He will keep knocking. What if I answer? What does he want of me? What do I fear? Many things, but failure. What if I fail? What if I am not good enough? What if I let him down? Fear. But he will keep knocking. But what if I succeed? Now there's the fear. What else will be asked of me? Where will he lead me? Will fear hold me and you frozen? Or will fear motivate me and will trust help me to become who I am meant to be? My next topic is enjoyable. Food, fellowship, fun, friends, and family. When I think of Emmanuel, I think of fellowship, a time of sharing worship, sharing friendships, and our lives with each other, and of course, food. We laugh with each other, grieve with each other, share our worries and our joys. Our bond with each other is an important part of faith. We are not meant to be alone. Jesus grew up with family, people sharing their lives with each other. Jesus chose 12 companions. How often they shared fellowship, walking together and talking, sharing meals together. Life is to be celebrated. We are meant to be joyful, to laugh together, to share our lives together. Whenever I think of Emmanuel and a fellowship, I think food. Food nourishes our body. Fellowship nourishes our hearts. We cannot survive without food. Without fellowship, how can we truly live a full life? Jesus ate with his friends, talked with them, and traveled with them. He celebrated at weddings, and the Last Supper, the Feast of the Passover, was a time of celebration with friends, a promise of God's love and Jesus' sacrifice. We are not meant to be alone. And I want to add that we must not to forget to feed our faith. For without food, our bodies cannot live. But without food, our faith cannot survive. Its roots 
too, will wither and die. We are the Lord's friends. We are his family. We are fathers and mothers, sisters and brothers for each other. It is my prayer that everyone may have a supportive family at home and in the church community. But family members do not always agree. They may argue and disagree. Likewise, our church family may not always agree. May we not let our differences overwhelm our bonds of love. We are one family, many ages, many colors, many races, many beliefs. We are all God's children. Friends, how enriched we are by the friendships which become a part of our lives. I am so very thankful for the friends who have become part of my life. They are the friends who share certain moments of our life, certain interests, certain places. Each has brought something special to us. Okay. Friends are God in action in our lives. And then there are special friends. I call them friends or sisters of the heart. Each of us may have or may have had such friends and how blessed I truly feel. These are the friendships that grow with time. These are the friends who may disagree with us, may believe that we are wrong, may even laugh at us and certainly with us. We cannot wait to share good news with them. Such friends would tell me when I am wrong, they even dare to. Okay. And I would call them when they, and they would call me when they needed me. These who are the friends who hold each other, hold each other tight, in times of suffering and grief. It's their arms that come around us. They laugh with us and cry with us. How blessed I have been. Such a friend the Lord wants me to be. Forgiveness. This one I find really difficult. Jesus, God's son, his messenger, his sacrifice to bring forgiveness to mankind and to show us a new life where we also forgive and are forgiven. Faith, love, forgiveness, the foundations of the Christian church. For a long time, I have struggled with forgiveness. How difficult it is to forgive when I look around me. Whether in ignorance or deliberate intent, we are destroying the earth and its richness. We seem to be surrounded by hatred, fear, anger, and war. How do we make it end? How do we forgive? I do know, however, that without forgiveness, how can there be love or faith? For me, forgiving does not mean forgetting. What we forget, we tend to repeat and repeat and repeat. Forgiveness means a new beginning for the one forgiving and the one forgiven. Sometimes forgiveness is not asked for. What do we do? Learn to forgive. Let forgiveness end the power of past wrongdoings over your life now and in the future. How many times should I forgive? Jesus is asked. The reply, 70 times seven. There are no limits. As we forgive, we are forgiven. Forgiveness, however, to me, is not a blank checkbook, not an insecure, not in, not an insecure comment to avoid accountability a pushing aside of responsibility. God's forgiveness is real, 
and so must ours be. It is a blessing to be given, not only to receive. To be forgiven, one must forgive. May we also learn to forgive ourselves. This I find difficult. For things done or not done, said or not said, and all the if onlys. This again, as I say, has been difficult for me. May we forgive ourselves as well as others. And now the future, what is going to be? Before stretches the future, whether the days be many or few, peaceful or turbulent. Oh Lord, give us wisdom, strength and faith, we pray. And now my final word, forever. It's the final mystery beyond our comprehension and understanding. Forever, eternity, infinity. It is timeless with no beginning and no end. Faith and trust are our guides. The Lord has promised to be with us always. And for me, I approach this forever, this eternity, with a certain amount of apprehension, but also with faith and excitement. For I am with you always, said the Lord. Like Paul, I say, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as also I am known. My prayer for you as I close this sermon. May God grant us faith, love, joy, and forgiveness. May the Lord walk before us as a guide. May he walk beside us as a friend. May he walk behind us to hold us up when we are tired or stumble and fall. May the Lord bless you. We shall sing together um, on eagle's wings. I wish I could fly.
Before I give my benediction, again, thank you to all of you for being here and sharing this service together with each other and with me. Thank you, Ian. Ian. And to those who worked with me and those who took part in this service and for your encouragement and, again, your work, my thanks. And now my benediction. May the Lord bless you this day and each day. And as we leave this place, may he be the wind beneath our sails and may he carry us on his eagle wings wherever we go. And now let's sing together. Go now in peace. Mm -hmm.